Hello, everybody, and welcome to Dan Clips. Uh, this is going to be a digital asset news clips exclusive. And the reason for that uh, is because we did a key of the day uh, today, as a matter of fact, and we have it posted over there for uh, a question that was asked, which was, um, hey, Rob, it seems like everything outside of Bitcoin uh, might be a scam, apparently, uh, or according to different Bitcoin maximalists. Is that true? And uh, of course, for that, I have to say, no, uh, not everything's a scam outside Bitcoin. But uh, there was someone who reached out to me uh, via Twitter on a DM and said that, hey, there's a guy who could answer this question or who could answer questions about your show. His name is Richard Hart. And I said, sure, have him on. And we had done this um, interview a while back. Now, the thing was with Richard Hart is that he's a controversial figure in cryptocurrency digital assets. I think there's no denying that. And he answered the question very well, and he went into Hex, which was fine. We, we agreed that uh, that's what it was going to be. And uh, it was a very long interview. Uh, without me uh, stopping him, it went 44 minutes in, in length, which is uh, pretty long for any channel uh, just for that. I've actually learned my lesson. When I had the CEO of Votes on, it went super long, and uh, I said I'm not going to do that again. So over here, uh, what I did was I split it all up into, into two pieces. So uh, the original part uh, that you can go watch the first 15 or so minutes or 18 minutes is over on Digital Asset News. And then we're going to finish up here where Richard is going to elaborate more on uh, Bitcoin and how it is uh, in, in really is inferior and also his project Hex. So uh, before we get into that whole thing, just know that uh, uh, do your own research. And as far as the Hex project itself, uh, I will not be investing in it. There's a, a couple of reasons. First of all, I'm not a real big risk taker. I don't uh, look outside uh, the top 100 and find these uh, low cap gems and dump a bunch of money into it. It's just not my thing. Now, that could be your thing, and that's fine. And then also, uh, when you do your own research, you're probably going to see a lot of people say, oh, this is a scam, and that's a scam, and Hex is a scam, and whatever else. You're also going to hear people say, it's totally awesome, and it's fantastic. So there's a wide uh, spectrum out there. But I would just remind you that uh, Ethereum, at one point, was called a scam by every person that owned Bitcoin, or at least almost every person that owned Bitcoin. And now here we are. And then you've just seen this uh, down the ride, or down the, down the whole path. So the real question is, who's going to have the last laugh? Is it going to be uh, all the people who said it was a scam? Or is it going to be Richard Hart who said, hey, I told you so. So uh, that is up for you to decide. Uh, I'm going to sit this one out uh, because I don't have to invest into everything. I have my positions. I am, uh, I've invested into uh, the safest positions that I think I can in one of the most, uh, what would be a volatile market. But we'll see how it all works out. So let's get into that right now and we'll have Richard explain everything. You know, if you look at replacing finance, what percentage of finance is currency? 5% maybe? What's everything else? Options, derivatives, loans, time deposits. Time deposits, which Hex addresses, is the second most product, uh, second most popular product at the bank. 7.2 trillion is a lot of money, man. And you, can go, you can pull this right from the St. Louis Fed's website, which is called FRED, FRED, and it gives you all the the up-to-date, uh, you know, quarterly reports from the economic stats from a lot of different countries, United States being one, uh, it's, you know, you have to be, you have to be very weak-minded and cowardly to demand so little from a cryptocurrency to get no benefits or upgrades in 10 years, not be able to do distributed exchange, not be able to do stablecoin, not be able to do scalability and throughput, not to have bug bounty program, what not to have security audits are you crazy like are you like this doesn't make any sense and so now other cryptocurrencies like ethereum and like hex we are making real advances and, and real difference in the world replacing these middlemen cryptocurrency was designed to replace middlemen if you use bitcoin you have to use middlemen to get to a stable coin you have to use middlemen to get into another coin you have to use middlemen to get scalability lightning network is just middlemen by the way so it's like it, you know, is that what you want? You want, oh, by the way, this whole year, Bitcoin's up like 50%. Hex is up thousands of percent. Other coins are up hundreds of percent. If I, I'll show you a chart. You just go to uh, charttrader.pro, I think it is. And you can put a chart of all the different coins, USD values versus each other. And Bitcoin's in the bottom third of the top market cap coins. Sure. That's the facts. The chart doesn't lie. Yeah, and that <clears> makes sense. I mean, the problem that I see is this is when like, like someone like, like yourself talks, you are cursed with knowledge. 
First, with knowledge, there's so much things that you know that the average investor, average person, average American, average whoever citizen is, that they just don't get it, right? So what's it going to take? Then? Okay. Yeah. What's it going to take then? As long as the number goes up, that's all you need to know. Look, if you're a really smart guy, you don't make any more money than the next guy. There's the price you bought in, there's the price you got out, and that's it. You understand more, congrats. You understand less, it doesn't matter. Software developers don't understand how most of the computing hardware works. The guys that build the hardware for computers don't understand how to build software. The guys that build hardware and software don't understand how to make a business around it and market it. Everything in the world is so complex now that there's a stack from the electron to the motherboard, to the BIOS, to the CPU, to the caching, to the secure enclave, to the operating system, to the compiler, to the real-time execution. And when you look at this whole stack, you get to choose what parts you're going to understand and you're going to be ignorant of everything else, period. Because that's the world of complexity that we live in. And that's fine. You don't need to know how your mouse works. You don't need to know how your computer works. You just need to choose the thing that went up and, and is going to keep going up. If you're talking about speculation, and in my opinion, the thing that people care about most in their cryptocurrency is making money. And all of this other kumbaya, change the world crap is a lie, a joke. It has never happened and it's never going to happen. How are you going to change the world with something that you have to buy into with money to get? You can't change the world with that because the people you're trying to help are already broke. They can't buy in. So how are you going to save Africa with Bitcoin? You're not because they have to buy it. And by the way, people think they're going to change the world with cryptocurrency. Who do you think owns more cryptocurrency? You, the plebs, with the dreams of socially influencing the world through your startup, or the bankers? Tim Draper bought the Silk Road uh, coins that, uh, you know, when Ross Ulbrich got tackled for running the Silk Road in a uh, library out of uh, San Francisco. He got tackled, and those coins got sold at auction, and Tim Draper bought them. So Tim Draper's got, you know, 100,000 coins. Anybody listening have 100,000 Bitcoin? No. I could list you some other bankers that have got hundreds of thousands of coins. The, the, the Winklevoss brothers have got 100,000 coins. The plus token Ponzi schemers in China have had 100,000 coins. I get like... Sure, sure, sure. And is, people, is, people force their ideas that don't make any sense on this technology. And I just have to re-educate them and teach them the truth and the reality. The reality is we want the number to go up. And if you want social change in the world, you're going to have to go do the political way and fight the hard fight like people have been doing for 100 years. Technology is not going to solve politics or be solved already. <clears throat> no, it's, it's all good points. And, um, but isn't it, there's two things. Isn't it always the same, same way with a project? It starts out with the best of intentions, and then all of a sudden there are a large group or just a small group of people who actually buy into it. And before you know it, there is whales buying up sure. more than they can. And it, happens, it will always be that way. It will always, always be that way. Yeah. So it's very because because every new idea starts from a limited number of people knowing it. And then it travels over time to more people. And those people have a, a disparate, some people have a lot of money, some people have less. Like you're going to get that in every, every startup, you're going to get it. Another thing people don't know about Bitcoin, 2,000 addresses hold 42% of all Bitcoin. But people think it's decentralized. All the minings in China, the people right. think it's decentralized. You're like, uh, not really. <laughs> but then I have to give them the nuance, right? And then I have to explain, listen, the things that have appreciated the most in the world in general are actually very centralized economically. I bet Bezos owns a whole lot of Amazon. I bet Zuckerberg owns a whole lot of Facebook. I, I bet J uh, Jobs owned a whole lot of Apple. And how did that work out for everybody? So I, so I tell people the truth and they've got to really broaden their horizons to understand it because I'm going to tell you, the thing that matters the most is number goes up. Stop saying it's decentralized, it's not. But that's okay, and here's why. You know, it's just like curse with knowledge, as you say. <laughs> it is one of those things. Yeah. So, here, so here's another thing. Does it ever frustrate you when you have to explain these things again and again and again? And then how much hate do you get on oh, the I'm, social I'm media hate. aspect? Insane hate. They're too stupid to understand it. The, the people that are influencers in the cryptocurrency space are very jealous and very angry with me because they thought I was their equal. I have a YouTube channel. I get views. They thought I was a YouTuber. I'm not. I retired at 25, a serial entrepreneur, hired and fired hundreds of people. And I've had companies that have had millions and millions, $60 million plus turnover a year. I'm a serial, like, annihilator of making money. I've done it over and over and over again. I've had successful businesses for a very, very, very long time. And so when I created a cryptocurrency that within a couple months is worth a billion dollars, they want to pretend it's not happening. 
because they feel regret because they think, oh, well, why didn't I do that? Right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of people feel that way. Oh, why didn't, why didn't I go do that? I could have go and invented something that was worth a billion dollars because I worked harder and I tried harder. And I, I told her like, I'll tell people the right thing to do and then they won't do it. Do you think so? Can, do you think people can do that though? Do you think everybody oh, can sure. do Yeah. If you've, if you've got an audience and you've got good economic game theory that solves some kind of problem and you get product market fit, there's millions of dollars to be made. There's only two people in cryptocurrency that get truly wealthy, founders and holders. Everybody else gets the shit wrecked out of them, mostly traders. The reason that the founders and holders get to make as, money as, as much money as they do is because traders are out there losing it all. Guys love to buy the top, sell the bottom, get shaken out. And who do you think makes that money? Everybody else. So traders being destroyed and annihilated and people getting shaken out is a large part of where the profit comes from in a closed system. And these systems are primarily closed. Richard, we could go on for hours on traders versus holders, DCAers, investors, but we are on limited time. Before we take off, tell us about Hex. Tell sure, us about what it is, how it all works. Yeah. Just, to, just, And you know what? Give us your best elevator pitch so people are yeah. like, I want that. Sure. Go to, go to Hex.com. For Bitcoin holder, you can mint your own Hex for free. Congratulations, you get free money. Uh, you can transform Ethereum directly into Hex in the contract. You can self-refer yourself to get a 32% bonus. Just click your own referral link and nobody else's. Uh, that ends, all that stuff ends in about 30 days. On November 19th, there's no more adoption of fire turning Ethereum into X directly. There's no more referral program. Uh, there's no more free claiming. That's all over. And every day you don't claim, your ability to claim gets smaller and smaller until it disappears on November, probably like 16th. Um, so November 19th is a big payday. Big payday is about $700 million right now. So if you're a staker and you lock up your, your hex, the longer you lock it for, the more bonus shares you get. So if you lock your hex an extra year, you get 20% more shares. If you lock your hex 10 years, you get 200% more shares, which is a three X. Then those shares, just like in a normal company where you have shares that divide up profit, same thing in hex, same thing in Bitcoin. You know, if you're, if you're 10% of the mining hash rate, you get 10% of the Bitcoin rewards inflation. And hex, if you're 10% of the uh, shares, you get 10% of the inflation and you get 10% of the other two incomes, which are emergency end stake half and uh, late end stake half. If people just see these gains and they can't hold out and they can't delay gratification, which this whole system is designed around, and they emergency end stake, they get huge penalties. Two days ago, somebody paid 80, 170 million hex in penalties. Hmm. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of dough. It's like, I think it's like three or $400,000 or something. And then... Uh, you know, the, half those penalties went to the staker class. So they, they get those as profit. Well, on the big payday, that same staker class with those shares is going to get 183 billion hex. And the total supply at that point will only be about 460 billion. So there's a $700 million payout being credited to the stakers in about 30 days. And that only happens once. And that's it. It never happens again. And the only thing that remains is uh, staking. So... You know, if a lot of people stake, then it takes a lot of supply off the market, drives the price up, supply and demand, reduces supply, increases the price. And then uh, if less people are staking, then it keeps ratcheting up the uh, annual interest rates that are paid out, which right now the average stake makes about 28.5% per year. Not too per shabby, year. right? Yep. And, you, and right. That's, there's no overhead. You don't have to have a computer. You don't have to know what you're doing. You do it with your cell phone. You, you buy Hex, you lock it, and then when your stake expires, you mint your Hex reward and you're done. It's no. really, really simple. Everybody likes simple. All right. So Hex.com yep. is the Hex. website Hex. to go to. So it's pretty For simple. Sure. So before we take off, I will just remind everybody to do your own research. I uh, do not have an affiliate link for anybody. So it's Hex.com. I will still link it. In you can the make one if you want. I you, could. You'd make 20% and they get 10% for using it. Fantastic. Where they could self refer themselves and make 32% themselves. And Richard, I, I, I want to make one thing clear before, we, before we, we get off of here. And that is that everybody is very up in arms about shilling, especially what happened in 2017 with the ICOs and da da da. Now, yeah. did, you, did you pay me anything to do this conversation no. today? Absolutely not. I've the reason never paid why anyone I, to have a conversation ever. Right. I, I have, I'm the popular guy with a shitload of followers. I don't. <laughs> 
I usually am like, when I do interviews with people, they're going to get more out of it than I'm going to get out of it. Se- second of all, if you don't want to get scammed, stop buying people's promises. Stop buying unregistered securities where people are promising you that they're going to do things if you give them money today. That's how everyone got scammed in 2017 with this ICO bullshit. People bought some stupid dream and then the dream didn't come true and it went to zero. Hex solves all that shit. It's finished. It's complete. It's done. No, no one needs to do anything at all. If I die and Hex.com goes offline, does not matter a bit. Contract keeps running. Market keeps running. Front ends keep running. You can use apphex.win. You can use hexmob.win. You can use uh, etherscan.io. All of those front ends allow you to use hex if hex.com goes offline. Hex is censorship resistant with no admin keys, no oracles, no promises that anyone's going to do any work. It's finished and it's complete. There's not any of those stupid problems that you see happening all over the rest of cryptocurrency where people buy promises and it goes to zero over and over and over again, no matter how much you yell about it. Are you going to tell me that DeFi is one of those promises? DeFi is mostly a scam. DeFi has admin keys. If an admin can upgrade things, he can downgrade things. If a DeFi project has an Oracle, you know what an Oracle really means? It means that some guy or two guys runs a server and whatever they say the price is, is what the price is. And if they want to change what that number is, it breaks the whole system. Uniswap does not have admin keys like that. Hex does not have admin keys like that. The vast majority of DeFi does have admin keys and oracles like that. So if it never fails, congrats, you all got lucky. But otherwise, it's a terrible idea. Cryptocurrency was designed for censorship resistance and to get rid of middlemen. And if you have admin keys or oracles, those are not censorship resistant and those are not secure. Like you're just, you're not doing crypto right if you, if you use anything that has an oracle or an admin key. All right, and that's it. So uh, hopefully you got a uh, exposure to to what that is. Again, do your own research, and uh, thanks for watching. I will see you on the next one.